Hi, my name is Camelia Akami Keys, but please feel free to call me Cami. Today, we're gonna to talk about how to develop faster hands in less than a week. My first suggestion is start playing with heavier drumsticks on your practice pad. These are Promark Signature Harvey Thompson and Ralph Nader sticks. You can use any marching stick to um, help you start developing your wrists and your fingers but um, a marching stick is gonna make drumming harder. And anytime something is made harder, you're gonna be able to build muscle. So, doing single stroke roll. Doing single stroke roll with a heavier stick, then putting these away and picking up your drum set stick. You're gonna feel how easy it is to play with a lighter stick. And that's the reason behind this, is to make playing a little bit harder so when you pick up your drum set sticks and you get on your drum set, you start flying around the kit. And uh, so that's my number one suggestion. Number two is get something called wrist weights. Wrist weights, I'm using these as an example, um, but you can get them on Amazon and I'll put a link below. Wrist weights are going to help you strengthen your wrist by making it harder to make the movement. Right, you can get a one pound uh, wrist weight, a two pound wrist weight. Um, I, I suggest keeping it um, really light and gradually moving up. It's just really something to help you get the movement down. Um, the way I teach um, all of my rudiments and my technique is to, um, you don't rely on the bounce or the rebound from the drum or the practice pad. I play everything like I'm playing on a pillow. I'm not relying on the bounce from a drum. Um, so that is my third suggestion, is start playing on a pillow. When you play drums on a pillow, it's gonna make it harder because a pillow doesn't have any bounce. And it could be any pillow. That's a pillow I got from Target. So you pick up your heavier marching sticks, you play on a pillow. You're gonna immediately see that you have to do more work here, you're gonna have to do, and it's just all gonna be like, wow. But the thing is, as soon as you start playing on a pillow with heavier sticks, possibly using your wrist weights if you wanna do all three, when you pick up your, when you pick up your drum set sticks, you're gonna see how much easier it is. And it's gonna be a lot easier to play your single stroke rolls, your double stroke rolls, when you get over to the drum kit, you're gonna be able to just boom, fly around. It's not gonna be like you're running through like sand or mud. You're gonna have so much more freedom to just fly around the kit and fly around on the practice pad or your snare drum or whatever instrument. So that is what really, really helped me when I was trying to develop and strengthen my hands and my wrists. It was playing on a pillow, playing with heavier sticks, playing, playing with wrist weights, and then uh, using a metronome, that's number four. Using your metronome really helped me keep track of my progress. So it could be any metronome. I love the, the Tama metronome. This Tama RW200 uh, helped me with subdividing and counting. And so this is my, my go-to. Of course, there's apps online and stuff, but this is a great one. My other suggestion is, hey, if you're like, you really enjoy playing on a, on a pillow and you're like, I gotta go to school or I wanna take my pillow with me. Um, my next suggestion is getting um, something called a gel pad, a moon gel pad. This is made by Artom and they're the ones that make the blue moon gels. Uh, so this is a great way to take your pillow with you. Um, other companies make some too, like uh, Mino makes a marshmallow pad. and So a lot of companies are getting into making these um, pads that kind of are the same feel as playing on a pillow. Play on a pillow if you're at home, if you're out, to get, get yourself one of these. And that's really going to help allow you to keep uh, working on building your sh and strengthening your hands uh, while you're, uh, you know, working on your speed. My other suggestion is 
practice specifically isolate the left hand. Isolating the left hand and doing all of these things specifically just with the left hand. Like I would take a lot of time and practice uh, using, flipping my stick around, looking at my fingers, looking at my wrists and seeing the motion that's being made in order for me to move the stick. So practicing like, like this with a heavier stick, focusing just on the left hand. If you're right-handed, your left hand is probably gonna be weaker. So I took about a week and just focused on my left hand because if we're talking about building stronger hands and your left hand is significantly weaker than your right, the only way to make both of the hands the same is you're gonna have to stop and work on the weaker hand. Because if you keep working on both hands together, the right hand is just gonna keep getting faster and the left hand is gonna like always be like behind. So what I learned and what I did was I was like, right hand, you're awesome. Thank you so much for being awesome. Left hand, you're awesome too, but we need to do some work. And so I would specifically work just on my left hand with all of these things, watching the motion, making sure my stick is going straight up and down. Uh, I noticed a lot of my students, um, when they're doing stuff like this, their stick is like going like this, their wrist is going, like, and they're getting like the Z type thing. So you wanna make sure like almost like there's a string attached to your stick, pulling it right back down to the pad. So you have to practice slow. Practicing slow is gonna help you get this stuff down. Um, that is like the number one way to develop fast hands is to practice slow. And you wanna practice with good technique because when you're practicing something over and over again, the repetition of it, if you're like not duplicating the correct thing, then you're gonna be learning bad habits. Like you're like, it's almost like a basketball player shooting and making the shot every time. If they're making the shot every time, they want to duplicate that, right? They don't wanna do or move position their body when they miss the shot. So this is kind of the same approach with drumming. If I'm going straight up and straight down, and every time I'm getting this nice solid hit, I wanna be able to recreate that. So practicing slow. And then also pushing the tempo and practicing fast. You know, pushing the tempo and seeing seeing your progress. Say at the end of a, a practice session and you've practiced slow, and you're like, I'm gonna see how fast I can play my single paradiddle, or I'm gonna see how fast I can play my double stroke roll. After you've practiced this technique, you know, you practice slow, that's, that's gonna be the next step is pushing yourself, picking up a heavier weight, right? Like that's the whole point of all of this stuff. All of these uh, tips are to play with basically heavier things, put things on you that are heavier, harder. The pillow makes it harder. All of these things make it harder so that when you pick up your lighter sticks, you have good technique and you have good endurance and you can play for a long period of time. So that's the goal. So play with heavier sticks, play on a pillow. If you're traveling, play on your marshmallow or your moon gel pad, practice with a metronome and uh, practice slow practice fast and work on the left hand specifically. Those are my tips. My name is Cami. I hope you guys found this helpful. Please like and subscribe. I really appreciate all the love and support. I'm gonna, you know, keep working on my, my new song I got coming out called I Like It Hot. I'm gonna play a little bit of it on the pillow to see, to show you guys um, how hard it is to play on a pillow, but uh, transitioning to a practice pad, you're gonna see like, it's like, wow, so much easier. So thank you guys so much for watching. Have a wonderful day. God bless. Hi, my name is Camelia Akami Keys, and I'm playing the Tama Star Babinga drum set. This drum kit sounds amazing. It looks amazing. It was handmade in Japan, and it really just sets itself apart from any other drum set on the market. Tom.
drums speak so well. These drums have uh, expression. They have voice. There is personality to this kit. language and I quickly learned that while I was serving in the United States Navy. We could not speak the same language but put a smile on someone's face by playing the drums. I make music to spread joy.